The very latest is Texas Senator Ted Cruz. Senator, welcome back. Good to see you. Sean, it's always great to join you. All right, we've got a lot to ask you tonight. Let me start with where do we stand right now? Where do we stand with the, your fellow Republicans in the U.S. Senate? Well, the fight is in the Senate now, and, and the real question is whether Senate Republicans are, are going to unite and stand alongside House Republicans. The fight is, you know, you know this, this afternoon I, I introduced two unanimous consent requests and asked the Senate, number one, let's pass the House continuing resolution. And Harry Reid objected. He said no, he didn't want to pass the continuing resolution. He didn't want to take off the table a government shutdown. And the second thing I introduced was a unanimous request to, to put in and say any amendments have to be subject to a 60 vote threshold. And again, Harry Reid said no, he objected. And the reason he said no is he wants to be able to use a 51 vote partisan vote of all Democrats to fund Obamacare. And, and I think that's wrong. I think that's what Republicans need to unify to protect the House bill that passed. And if every Senate Republican stands with the House Republicans, we can stop Harry Reid from funding Obamacare. All right, that, that's a key question, though. In other words, and, and Mike Lee actually predicted earlier today that, in fact, the Republicans would be united. You're in the caucus. You speak to your fellow Republicans. Where do they stand as of now? Are you confident they'll stay together? Well, I, I think the votes are fluid right now. And, you know, a couple of weeks ago, everyone agreed there was no chance the House would vote to defund Obamacare. And then on Friday, they did so. Right now, I think in the Senate, the votes are fluid. But, you know, we're going to have two votes this week. We're going to have a procedural vote on Wednesday on what's called cloture on the motion to proceed, which is to take up the bill. And then there's going to be another vote on Friday that is cloture on the bill itself, a motion by Harry Reid to cut off debate on the bill itself. Sean, it's the vote on Friday that matters. The vote on Friday, Harry Reid is trying to cut off all debate on Friday and to be able to fund Obamacare with just 51 votes. And in my view, I hope and believe that all 46 Republicans should vote together on Friday against cutting off debate, against giving Harry Reid the power to fund Obamacare. All right, but, you know, I was reading a profile about you in GQ magazine, and uh, uh, be careful when you go <laughs> you, you to You've got to update your magazine subscription, Sean. <laughs> uh, but, you know, one of the things that did highlight, it, for example, that you don't get along very well with Senator McCain. Number two, they quoted Senator Grassley as saying there's no... Nobody's been this activist as a freshman se uh, senator maybe since Barry Goldwater. Is, is there some resentment among your colleagues that, that you have been forcing them on this very thing that most of them promised they do? Well, look, Sean, you know, I, I have civil relations with, with every one of my colleagues, and, and there's some folks in Washington that, that are trying to make this issue about personalities, trying to make this about individual politicians. Look, most Americans don't care about politicians in Washington. They care about their lives. They care about their jobs. They care about their families. Obamacare isn't working. It's killing jobs. It's driving up health insurance premiums. It's causing people to lose their health care. And, and so my view, I, I am ignoring all of the, the slings and arrows that are tossed around. It's not personal about anyone in Washington. It's about our doing our job, listening to the American people, and bringing it back jobs and economic growth. You know something, Senator? I can't name a single Republican in either the House or the Senate, please correct me if I'm wrong, that did not run on a platform to repeal and replace Obamacare. I can't think of one. Right. This, right. what you're doing, will do that. I don't hear any other proposals that would accomplish that. Um, and then Chris Wallace revealed this weekend that Republicans are feeding him opposition research to hurt you, even though you're just basically <laughs> helping them fulfill their campaign promise. I want to get your reaction to that. Well, look, I mean, folks can do whatever they want to, to resist change. And there are a lot of people who have been in Washington a long time that are fearful of change, they're fearful of risk, they're fearful of anything that changes the clubby way Washington does business. But look, our country's going broke, we got a $17 trillion national debt, and Obamacare is a total train wreck. And, uh, you know, no matter what insults others choose to hurl at me, and in the last few weeks they've picked quite a few, some of them have been pretty amusing actually, but no matter what they do, 
I'm not going to respond in kind. Mm -hmm. My job is to represent 26 million Texans and to fight to defend them. And Obamacare is hurting Texans. It's hurting Americans. What about this Forbes study that came out today? $7,450 for a typical family of four. Now, that's extra money that yeah. they'll pay for health care. Yeah. That's not a $2,500 cut, as the president said. Give me all the reasons why you think that Republicans should fight and stop this. Look, I mean, that's a great example where the president promised a $2,500 cut for the average family of four. Instead, you're looking at basically a $7,500 increase. That's a $10,000 swing, Sean. $10,000 is a lot of money for anybody. But you know who it hits the hardest? It hits people who are struggling. It, it, hits, it hits young people. It hits Hispanics, African Americans. It hits single moms. It hits people who are really working to put food on the table and provide for their kids. And those are the people hurt the most by Obamacare. Those are the people being pushed to 29 hours a week. Those are the people losing their health insurance altogether. So we got to fight for them. You know, yeah. Washington is good at giving special deals to giant corporations like President Obama did, to members of Congress like President Obama did. We ought to treat American families at least as well as the president treats giant corporations and members of Congress. Look at Walgreens. Walgreens now announced last week they're going to drop health insurance coverage for 160,000 of their workers. The Cleveland yep. Clinic is going to cut 6% of their workforce. They cite Obamacare. Home Depot, 20,000 employees. SeaWorld will only have part-time workers. They're only allowed to work now 28 hours a week. All as an impact of this legislation? Is, is that your understanding? Yeah. Everywhere you go, you hear from people, it's hurting their lives. People with disability coming up to you saying, please stop this law. I'm, I'm in, at risk of losing my health insurance. This thing isn't working. But you know what? Washington has not been listening to the American people. It's why Congress has, you know, 10, 12, 14 percent approval ratings, because we haven't been listening to the American people. But let me tell you, Sean, this week is the fight. If you're fed up with Washington, if you want Washington to listen, it has never been more important than right now to pick up the phone, call your senator and say, vote no on cloture, vote against funding Obamacare and stop Harry Reid from amending this bill to fund mm -hmm. Obamacare. Let's go to the and, next step. But, uh, yeah. You described what's going to happen this week and you, you pointed out Friday is the important vote. Back in 1995, uh, as the government shut down, we were heading into that. Republicans were blamed 46 to 27 percent. Right now, a Pew poll today says people pretty much blame the Republicans and the president equally. There's been a lot of talk about what would happen if there is that this would result in a government shutdown. What is your answer to those people that say, well, we can't shut down the government? What, how do you respond to that? Well, look, I don't think we should shut down the government. And today, the motion I, I filed, Harry Reid objected. If he had not objected, we would have taken a government shutdown off the table. It's Harry Reid and the president who are saying, unless they can force funding for Obamacare, unless they can force Obamacare on every American family, they're going to shut down the government. Mm -hmm. And the way we stop it is standing up to them and saying, look, fund every bit of government. And, and, and if Harry Reid kills, the House did that. That, that's what the House has voted to fund government. It's Harry Reid yeah. who is trying to stop this, who, who objected today to doing that. All right. When you were on this program last week, both you and, and Senator Lee were very, very clear that you will do everything in your power to get there. Um, does that mean filibuster? And tell me where you think this ends. Uh, I don't know if you have a crystal ball, but tell me about what you're willing to do and where do you mm -hmm. think it all will end up? Well, I'm going to use every procedural means that, uh, available to me to fight this fight. Including this filibuster. is a multi-stage fight. Everything, including filibuster. Yeah. This is a multi-stage fight. The first stage was unifying the American people. We got over 1.6 million people who have signed the national petition at DontFundIt.com. The second step was the House vote on Friday, defunding Obamacare. Just a couple of weeks ago, Washington said that was impossible. The third step is this week, unifying Senate Republicans, getting all 46 Republicans to stand together. And the next step is getting red state Democrats to come together to listen to the American people and stop the train wreck that is Obamacare. Last question. The president says he will not negotiate on the debt. And he actually made the statement that the debt, if we increase the debt limit, that won't necessarily increase the debt. Maybe, maybe my calculator's off, but I would assume it would. 
Well, look, the, the, the president's approach to negotiation is just refusing to talk about the problems. If we get Senate Republicans to stand together this week, that will change that dynamic. Let me say to you, Sean, I can't imagine any Republican who campaigned against Obamacare voting on Friday, along with Harry Reid and every Senate Democrat, to empower Harry Reid to fund Obamacare. It's that Friday vote that matters, and this week, the phone calls to the senators are going to make all the difference. Senator, I applaud your efforts. I'm with you in this. To me, this is a tipping point for the country. Every Republican ran on this. Why they're opposing you, I don't know. But I appreciate you, you fighting a good fight, and uh, it's going to be a very interesting and historic week. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Sean.